uh, what artificial general intelligence is. And after that, uh, so two questions in one, uh, artificial superintelligence, which will be yeah. the focus of our talk today, because that's what we really have to, uh, uh, along with general uh, artificial intelligence, that's what we really have to understand. If, if, if you can't understand the threat, you can't uh, you know, address yeah. it, obviously. So yeah. can you please explain those two? Yes, first I'd like to distinguish uh, narrow AI from artificial general intelligence. Narrow AI is AI that, that is designed for uh, solving a particular task or, or a narrow class of, of tasks. It could be playing chess, or it could be safely driving a, a vehicle uh, uh, through city traffic or, or, or something else. Uh, and uh, all the AI systems we have today are narrow AI systems. Uh, and in contrast, artificial general intelligence uh, is some, something that is meant to be uh, uh, much, much more uh, flexible and broad in, in, in its capabilities. And, uh, and we typically require that the, the machine should have all the relevant cognitive capabilities that we associate with human intelligence, ranging from, from uh, trivial aspects uh, like uh, memory capacity and so on uh, through uh, more advanced um, ideas like um, planning of, of uh, uh, scenario planning and uh, and emotional things I guess as well. Emotion is a complicated thing that that plays into to the concept of, of a goal of, of a machine. Maybe we can talk about that too. Um, so, so there's this idea that we try to, to uh, stick to, which is that goals and intelligence are, are separate things. But, but uh, intelligence, uh, maybe the most advanced parts of intelligence are creativity and this mysterious thing we talk about as outside the box thinking. We want that to be included as well in, in, in the uh, flexible kind of intelligence that we call artificial general intelligence. So, so far, this is only a, a theoretical and hypothetical concept because we haven't built such uh, a machine yet. Uh, but it's been uh, a goal of parts of the AI uh, community ever since the 1950s uh, when the field uh, started. Uh, and uh, some parts of uh, narrow AI uh, are, are taking steps, small baby steps uh, towards artificial general intelligence by broadening uh, the scope of the AI algorithms. This could be, for instance, uh, First, you had uh, 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 an AI that could play the game of Go or the game of chess. And then uh, uh, they built um, at uh, DeepMind, uh, the Google-owned uh, 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 cutting-edge AI company in London. They built uh, um, AlphaZero, which is an AI for playing a much, much broader range of, um, of board games. Uh, and which was able to attain world-class level uh, or higher level than the previous uh, uh, best uh, humans and, and best machines in Go and in uh, chess uh, and in other games. Just starting with the rules of the game and no, no other knowledge. So really picking up from scratch. So that's a step, a small step in the direction of, of the broadening of competence that we need for, for artificial general intelligence. Now, broad uh, board games is, is a very, very small part of, of the spectrum of intelligence. Uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, one-tenth of a percent or something like that uh, of our general intelligence. And that's just a number I pull out of thin air, and it's probably an overestimate. I used to be a a chess player for, for several decades, so maybe I tend to es overestimate the significance of, of broad games. But another uh, very impressive uh, AI system uh, that has been talked 
a lot about since it was uh, uh, released in 2019 and the uh, uh, second version in 2020 uh, is the uh, GPT-2 and GPT-3 softwares, which produce text. So it works uh, by uh, the user gives prompts the machine with a few sentences of uh, English language, and the machine then goes on to, to write something that, that uh, is supposed to be a sensible continuation. Uh, and this works really well. The machine is very, very good at picking up on, on the tone and the genre and so on of, of what you started with. So some of it can superficially look quite intelligent. And the reason I mentioned this is that using language is, I think, a much, much more significant part of uh, general intelligence. It, it's a, a significant percentage of what we would uh, call general intelligence. Most of the stuff we can achieve uh, is achieved at least partly through our use of language. And the next step from artificial intelligence to su artificial superintelligence. Yeah. What's yeah. for people to understand? Because that's a big change. Yes. So, so, so uh, artificial superintelligence, that, that's uh, simply an artificial uh, general intelligence that uh, vastly exceeds human capability across the full range of, of uh, relevant cognitive capabilities. Yeah.